First, we have our hands full with the weather as Hurricane Isaias gathers strength in the Caribbean and takes aim at Florida. And in just the last hour, we have a new update on the storm's track. And now we're getting word the first watches are hitting Central Florida. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kirsten O'Connor. And I'm Justin Mormouth. We have a lot to get to on this Friday, starting with Hurricane Isaias, which is now causing Brevard County to go under a hurricane watch. We have team coverage for you this noon, starting with meteorologist Candace Campos. And we'll explain what the difference between watch and warning is in just a few seconds. But let's look at the satellite imagery. It is a kind of a right sided storm here. What I mean by that is you see where this one is right now. That is where they're expecting the center to be. Everything else is on the eastern side of the storm, and that's going to be good news for us here in Central Florida. This is the latest 11 a.m. track. Sustained winds of 75 miles per hour, making it a weak Category 1 hurricane, but still a hurricane. So this is what we're expecting over the next couple of hours, moving over very warm waters between the northern coast of Cuba and the Bahamas. We're talking temperatures in the mid 80s, bath water, you could say. But I know all eyes are looking down the road come Saturday into Sunday. So this is a closer look, giving you a better idea of the timing of the system. It looks like it will be nearing just due east of our southern zones. We're talking Southern Brevard County by Sunday at 8 a.m. and then continuing its northerly track over our uh, just east of our northern counties by 8 p.m. on Sunday. So as of now, this is looking more like a Sunday play, giving us a few hours if you do want to make preparations or whatnot as we head into your weekend. Of course, these models continue to fluctuate on the coast, off the coast. But what does this mean for us for our impacts here in Central Florida? Jonathan, uh, meteorologist Jonathan Kegis is pinpointing more of that. Yeah, we're watching that closely here. Again, the impacts likely going to be some at least gusts getting close to hurricane force right along the coast. We're not talking about widespread hurricane force winds by any means across central Florida. This is mainly right along the coast. There is a better opportunity for widespread tropical storm force wind gusts. Still though, in our coastal counties, the main impacts with this going to be to the beaches. Again, beach erosion likely gonna be high. We're talking about that hurricane watch. Again, that means hurricane conditions are possible within 48 hours, and that's including coastal Brevard and inland Brevard. Again, that's the opportunity for those possible hurricane impacts over the next 48 hours. Candace Campos and I will be back in just a few minutes to pinpoint county by county impacts for you as we head through the weekend, guys.